extra precautions to ensure your safety so you can focus on your recovery. Please call their central intake unit at 904-345-7277, option 3, to schedule your visit. Brooks Rehabilitation is the official rehabilitation provider for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's your apartment speaking, and I need some favors. When you're singing in the shower, just try going up a key. You're trying to be an alto when really you're a soprano. Oh, and if you could bundle your renters and car insurance with GEICO, it's easy to do online and we could save money. And then, when you read your murder mysteries at night, could you read out loud? But skip the murder parts because I get scared. GEICO. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com today. Hanania Subaru of Orange Park would like to present our new dealership with over 13 acres of vehicles to choose from in our new online buying program, iBuy. You decide how much of your buying experience you do online. Browsing, value your trade, picking your payments, financing. Just go to SubaruofOrangePark.com, pick out your vehicle, and click iBuy to begin. Become an iBuy preferred customer at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, your local Subaru superstore. The Publix Tailgate Show continues right now. Welcome back. J.P. Shadrick with Mike Dempsey from the Hananiah Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville. The Lions and the Jaguars tee it up today at 1 o'clock, and today's ta- game is presented by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. We have Fox Sports in the house today. Not, we do. Not many Fox games, of course. No. Uh, we get to see Brock Heward today. Former quarterback, former Washington Husky. Yeah. I uh, spent about six years in the National Football League with the Seattle Seahawks for a little bit and the Indianapolis Colts as well as a backup to Peyton Manning for a couple of years. Good analyst. He is. He does a, a great job. College football mainly has been his mm-hmm. forte, ESPN for a long time, now a second year with Fox Sports. But without Pac-12 or Big Ten football going on right now, they've put him on the NFL on Fox. And I'm sure he's happy for the opportunity. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. And we had a chance to catch up earlier this week. He has a good background with Gardner Minshew. He is in the Seattle area on radio out there as well. So he's covered uh, Washington State for a long time. So we get some insight onto Gardner Minshew's mindset going into this week and how to affect Matthew Stafford and much more with Brock Heward of Fox Sports. You've known him for a while. You're out in Seattle, of course, on radio and then covering the college games on Saturday and now NFL on Sunday. So you've known Gardner for a little bit. This is his year to prove that he can be the guy in the NFL. But it's funny because he probably shouldn't be in this position to begin with. He shouldn't even mm-hmm. have played last year. Now he has the opportunity. What have you made of his season so far? Yeah, I talked to him a bunch uh, on Friday when we were out at the facility. First of all, he's 2-0 and when I've done his game, so he's <laughs> excited about that, and he knew that. Uh, secondly, he's a rental coog. He's not really from Wazoo. When you're there seven months, you're not really – people said, oh, you're a Husky, he's a cougar. I'm like, he's he basically lived in a rental for seven months and made the most of it in his 11-win season. Is absolutely a character, as you and your audience knows, uh, having followed him the last couple of years. Uh, you know, I said to Gardner, I said, okay, when you're done playing and we, we know you want to coach, are you going to install an air raid system? in your said high school or college, or do you like this pro style stuff? And he didn't even hesitate. He's like, are you kidding me? I'm going air raid. (laughs) We're throwing the rock and spreading it everywhere and playing in space and simplifying. So to me, that's, that's the, the conversation is how much can he grow? We've seen Aaron Rodgers, our crew twice this year. And frankly, it's unfair what he's doing to defenses. He's taking them apart pre-snap. He's taking them apart after. makers can he command the show at the line of scrimmage consistently like the great guys do 
And right now, that's still, I think, to be fair, a work in progress. Yeah. How long does that process take to figure it out? We know how long he's going to have to figure it out. Can he do it in that amount of time? He has to show significant steps. You know, I remember Pete Carroll saying to me about Russell Wilson, it takes four or five years for you to get your master's degree, your true mastery of your system, of what defenses are doing. So he's not going to have four-year master's degree here in year number two and what, his 18th start. But what you've got to see is that command grow over the course of the season, right? I mean, he's, he's his decision-making, touchdown interceptions, very good. His accuracy to me is just fine. But when you watch Aaron, when you watch Mahomes, when you watch Russell, when you watch those guys at the very, very top and you see, golly, how did they change that protection? How did they change that play? How did they keep the defense on guessing at all times? How, how did they constantly get to the very best play uh, against anything thrown their way? That's what the very, very elite do at this level now in this day and age. And as I said, he's not going to get his master's degree, but he's got to work towards it over the course of the season. And uh, that's frankly what I'm excited to watch today uh, against the Detroit team that does a bunch of junk at the line of scrimmage, but ultimately plays a bunch of man behind it. Can he take advantage of it? Not for a series, not for a quarter, not for a half. Can he do it for 60 minutes? Because this team will need him to. Rock Heward with us from Fox Sports. Balance has been the buzzword this week around TIAA Bank Field. Getting James Robinson more involved, deeper into the game. He had only 13 carries last week in that loss in yep. Houston. And it feels like that might take some of those things off Gardner's plate if they can balance things out for Jay Gruden. No question. And that sets up your movement where I think Gardner's very comfortable. That sets up more play action. And yeah, to be sitting there, and, and to your point, a lot of it is situationally. When you're behind, you've just frankly got to throw it more. But to be dead last in the league, 67% for an old old line coach like Doug Marone, that, that's just not that's not going to work. That's not how you're going to function. And on top of it, I really like your two tackles. I mean, Cam Robinson's in a contract year, and you are seeing it. That guy is playing with a fury and a vengeance and a consistency he's not shown his previous three. Juwan Taylor on the other side, I don't know if they keep a pancake stat in the NFL, but if they did for offensive tackles, I promise you he would be high up there and well above average. He has some snap and some nastiness. Uh, AJ Kant's having his best year as a pro. Linder is the center. Of salt. I mean, this is a above average offensive line. And the fact that they're sitting there at 66% pass, that's not tenable, nor does it play to your strengths. And, and I would guess we're going to see a commitment to that run game today. Rock Heward with us. Let's flip it to the Jaguars' defense. Uh, they've had some injury issues as of late, but consistently throughout the year, they have struggled to find pass rush. One sack in each of the five games so far, and really not a lot of pressure on quarterbacks in general. Not many hits, not many pressures. It's crucial to get Matthew Stafford's face and make him move a little bit and dance those feet around. But if you don't, he has the awareness and the arm to carve yep. you up. Yes, he does. And, and I think you're going to see Todd Wash be more aggressive. Now, the, the burden is, to your point about some of the, the injuries, you know, you're going to, I think, see Correa start in their base package today. Wow. A guy that's had three days of work. You're going to see Jabal Sheard, in my opinion, uh, after about being here seven days. You're going to see him take some significant snaps today. So, I mean, guys, right, literally, right off the street in Sheard's case and, and Correa, totally different system his third and four years. So uh, that that's going to be a little burdensome on the early downs, but I think you're going to see them cut it loose, especially if they get Detroit into passing situations. While Detroit is Galladay is a big receiver. They don't scare you with their speed. Amendola doesn't run that great. Marvin Jones isn't a blazer by league standards. So I think they're going to trust their people to play some man on the back end. And in any passing situation they can, they're going to crank it up. But yeah, they're going to be down some bodies today. Uh, in that front, there's going to be some brand new faces that they're, they're going to have to to know the basics on early downs. And then to your point, you've got to get home. You've got to hit uh, Matthew Stafford. 24 QB hits on the year. Uh, that's near the bottom of the league. Uh, the good news for them is they're facing the worst in the league as far as pressure. Detroit has five sacks as well and only like 16 hits on the quarterback. So, yeah, the team that, that, that 
gets the grass stains on either Gardner, Gardner or Matthew more consistently, is probably the team that's going to win. Brock Hewer, great visit there. The extended version with bonus material. Yes, Mike. <laughs> I uh, like it. Available on the official podcast network presented by Vistar right now. Uh, he's paying attention, though, JP, because he's echoing things that we've been calling for now for a couple of weeks. Uh, commitment to the run, right? You've got an above-average offensive line. Use it to set the tone and – maybe sell out a little bit on that pass rush, right? I mean, it's not happening with rushing four guys. So, you know, you're getting beat anyway. You're giving up a lot of points. I think a lot of folks uh, who are uh, fans of the Jaguars have been calling for them to get a little bit more aggressive with the pass rush and let the chips fall where they may play a little single coverage on the back end. That's exactly what Brock Heward was talking about. This week's Selfies for Change player is wide receiver LaVisca Chenault Jr. Take a virtual selfie with him and unlock a donation to tackle social injustice. Get started at TIAABank.com slash selfies for change. Time for our weekly visit with Jag sideline reporter Rick Ballou, presented by McGowan's Heating and Air. We call it Has Rick Lost It? Ricky. All right, perhaps I sound like a broken record. You know, same old, same old. Here comes Detroit. Worst rushing defense in the NFL. For the Jaguars, a new kicker for a fifth consecutive week. Can the Jaguars run the ball? Perhaps have a little bit of balance after last week, but passing it 49 times, rushing it only 20. How about score early? 13 consecutive games now. If the Jaguars have not put up a touchdown on their opening drive, you have to go back to the New York Jets week eight of 2019. The lack of pass rush. Only five sacks so far this year. And another coaching controversy. This time it's Detroit's Matt Patricia rolling in. Many believe if he doesn't win today, he is out of a job. Tell you what. Hardest part is trying to figure out what's really going on with this team. That's what COVID has changed for us. We're not in the locker room. We're not traveling with the team. We're not in the team hotel. I really don't understand what's going on with this team, visiting them during the week. How are they feeling? Gardner Minshew got aggravated. He felt as if, um, you know, asked by a reporter who still doesn't understand how to unmute himself before he asks a question. Minshew responded, personally, I liked it. I want my quarterback to be upset. They've lost four straight games. But not knowing what's going on with this team, I think is the most difficult part of it. You can get that insight and really feel that way when you're with them. Through COVID, we haven't been able to figure out what's really going on yet with this young team. Now, defensively, they get back some key players today. C.J. Henderson, Miles Jack. We'll find out about Josh Allen here in a couple of minutes. Will that be the difference in the game? Jaguar fans certainly hope so. Oh, that's Has Rick Lost It, presented by McGowan's Heating and Air, proudly keeping your family comfortable since 1974. Call 904-264-COOL. We'll see how many of these guys are back today. He mentioned Henderson there and Miles Jack back, but a, a handful of other guys are still questionable, including Josh Allen. DJ Chark is one of those on the list. Avery Jones in the middle today. Those right. are all questionable, and we'll find out in a little bit. Yeah, Chark, uh, the indications have been truly a game-time decision and that it's leaning towards him playing, but that's not official right now. But you have to wonder how effective he'll be on a less than 100% ankle if he does play today. I think the big uh, news is that Miles Jack is ready to go, and we saw how much they missed him in that game and a half without him. No doubt about that. Uh, let's come back in a moment. We will uh, get our Baptist Health connection with a player. This week is Jawan Taylor with senior writer John Ozier. The Lions and the Jaguars coming up. And from TIAA Bank Field, this is the Public Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, the CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing staffing firms in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI knows how important it is to find the right people for your team. See why some of Jacksonville's top companies choose CSI for their staffing needs. Visit thecsicompanies.com or call 800-582-0828 today. That's 800-582-0828 for the CSI Companies. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're getting refreshed now, palm trees swaying now, letting loose now, busting a move now, cranking up the beats now, hands in the air now, feeling free now. You're on Tropic Time now. 
And right now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, try our watermelon mojito and guava margarita smoothies. And you're tasting fruity now, sipping sunshine now, toasting summer now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Slot right, blue 42, hot, hot. A great quarterback is a true leader with a work ethic that never wavers and a desire to win that is second to none. We know a truck like that. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck 43 years straight. With impressive towing and payload, Ford F-150 makes tough jobs look easy. Visit your local Ford dealer for great offers on F-150, official truck of the NFL. Based on 1977 to 2019 calendar year total sales. Jags fans, let's get ready for game day. Now, Jaguars football is back, and we can't wait to be Duval together at TIAA Bank Field this fall. Now, before you head to the stadium, make sure you feel 100%. Protecting the team starts with you, so be sure you've got your mask and you practice social distancing from the parking lot to your seats. Visit jaguars.com slash stadium and get answers to all your game day questions. And remember, stay safe, Duval. Hey, Jacksonville, this is Joe Adib from Bono's. I just want to let you know that we have now reopened all of our dining rooms. We appreciate all the love that you have showed us during this crisis. For over 71 years, we have been here for you through good times and bad. Our award-winning barbecue and our unbelievable staff look forward to seeing you soon. Be safe. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and I am proud to announce that Good Greek Moving and Storage is now the official mover of your Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are making all of the right moves, and you should too. So when it's time for you to move, do it like the Jags and call the Good Greek. Simply dial Star Star Greek from your cell, or go to goodgreek.com. That's goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, official movers of Jacksonville Jaguars. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Jaguars game day presented by Vice Star Credit Union. The public tailgate show rolls along. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bank Field. The Lions and the Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock. Crystal Restaurants remains committed to the health and safety of guests and team members. Restaurants are following strict public health guidelines and are also taking extra precautions, such as staying in contact with local health officials for the latest advisories. Crystal drive throughs are open 6 a.m. to midnight. Restaurants are offering delivery through Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. And we've got it here today as oh, well. Oh, yes, we do. We always do on game yes. day. A game day tradition. I'm going to get my grub on. Uh, in just a little bit, we will. <laughs> We're uh, about to uh, catch up uh, with the latest archive of the official podcast network. And also on that network this week, the Ozone Podcast. From uh, Friday, in fact, John Osier, Jaguars.com senior writer, caught up with Jawan Taylor. Fantastic conversation. Check it out on the podcast. But now, time for the Baptist Health Connection with a player. And a piece of that interview with right tackle Jawan Taylor with senior writer John Osier from the Ozone Podcast. Tell me about your rookie year and how tough it is for an offensive lineman in the NFL to adjust. What was the biggest thing that you took away and what was the toughest thing about that year? Uh, first off, just coming in and having to learn the actual NFL style offense and actually, you know, locking into that. Uh, that was pretty tough at first. Um, but then after I learned that, it was just transitioning from the game speed is a little different from college to the pros. And then, you know, um, going against great players every single day. Like I came in going against like Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell and Josh Allen, different guys like that every day. So that definitely made me better and had me prepare for, you know, my first game in the in in NFL. So, uh, you know, just doing that, just the transition to that was hard itself. But other than that, um, everything else was good. You know, we playing the game we love, and, you know, we come in every day in the building. You just come in with a great attitude and a, and a great mindset. And just, you know, you got to you gotta be willing to learn every single day being a rookie. Um, you know, just be quiet in the back of the meeting room and yeah. ask the questions. We need to ask questions and, uh, you know, listen to your, your veterans because last year I had all veterans next to me, and I was the youngest on the O-line and in the O-line room. So just soaking up everything, Brandon and Cam and, and all those guys were telling me, AJ, and, and you know, that, that helped me out a lot. So um, that, that helped me get th- through my rookie year for sure. Now, the reason I asked you that is 
I think something maybe fans would never realize, but I noticed early this offseason. From it seemed like the first week and a half after this season ended, I saw you in the building. You were already back. You were already lifting. You were already working toward this season. This was pre-COVID. But not every first-year guy going into the second year is back like that. Does that say anything about who you are, your approach? It struck me that you really were ready to get started as soon as this thing ended last year. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, I always had that work ethic and that hunger and that drive to want to be better and uh, be the best that I can be. And most definitely just always being available for my team, um, being healthy. And, and I knew different things I needed to improve on for my rookie year going into this year. So um, I wanted to take a little what, week, week-long week break and get right back to it. Because, um, you know, I'm young and different things like that. I could just come right back into it and, and get right back in the groove of things. So um, it, it wasn't no problem for me. Um, I talked to the strength coaches and, and different things like that, and, and they put together a good plan for me before the, the virus hit. And, um, you know, after the virus hit, of course, we had to all go home and quarantine and different things like that. But um, they definitely they definitely were working me hard when I first got back. So um, I had to just lock into it and, and try to get better. The offensive line, there was so much talk all offseason. People wrote it, that there's going to have to be change this offseason. And if there wasn't, it was going to be a disaster. Mm-hmm. But they brought this whole group back. And so far through five games, I would make the argument that the offensive line is the best unit on the team. You don't have to say that. How much confidence did you guys have coming into it? And how much has continuity helped your group? Uh, it's, it's just, you know, we came in confident just knowing uh, our ability. That's the main thing. And, you know, we, we knew we had talent. We knew we had everything we needed. And, uh, you know, just another year with Coach Warhop and another camp just put it all together. Um, we all practiced hard in, um, in all season and, you know, we grinded hard and worked out hard. And, we, you know, we just always talk. We're very close and, you know, tight knit. So, um, you know, we talk outside of the building, hang out outside of the building, different things like that when we can. Um, but, you know, it's just, that's just how it is, man. We, we just locked into it and, and invested our time into it. So I feel like that's what's making us better. The Baptist Health connection with a player this week, right tackle Juwan Taylor. Baptist Health changing health care for good. I could listen to him talk all day long. I yeah, think. look, um, you know, they're getting pretty good reviews, the offensive line. Got to really avoid penalties. So, uh, JP, we've seen this offense struggle to overcome when they're in uh, long down and distance type situations. I think they've been better in that regard than they were last year, but it's still something on a week-to-week basis uh, the Jags have had seemingly a crippling uh, hold or uh, whatever the, the false start at the wrong exact time, negating a big run from James Robinson. We've seen that a few times, so uh, playing a clean game is going to be important today. The full interview available on the Ozone Podcast presented by Vistar on the official podcast network for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And now time to hear from Jaguars Director of Player Development, Marcus Pollard. He takes us inside the team each week, this time headed into week six. Marcus Pollard, holding it down. I would expect nothing less out of you. <laughs> yeah, man, holding it down. It's uh, It's been great trying to make sure that our guys stay motivated and stay inspired. And so to me, I'm just trying to hold down my little part to help our team be effective. I was going to say, I, I'm sensing a little bit, maybe the energy's down a little bit. Yeah. But it's what it is. It's four straight losses. Yeah, and, you know, having lost how we lost and then lost to the teams that we lost, and we lost the teams that, three teams that hadn't even won a game prior to. And so, yeah, the energy level is a little bit lower than it typically is. Um, but, you know, I hate losing. I want our guys to have success. I want our coach staff to have success. And I'm a part of that, you know. And so when we lose, we all lose together. And we all feel that burden and pain. Is it something with a young team where they have to learn how to finish a game if they're close? Like last week, they were in that ball game in the fourth quarter, but just couldn't pull the trigger and get it done towards the end for a number of different reasons. Is that something that a team can can grow into as the year goes along? Eventually, it, it becomes your culture. It becomes your DNA. Uh, the one thing that I'm really inspired by, we're not having to have conversations about guys playing hard. You know, so if we're having to learn how to win, that's one thing as opposed to having to learn how to win and guys are quitting. And so when you have that ability to learn to play the game and learn how to finish games with such a young team, it's going to pay dividends. Let's just hope it, it starts to pay dividends here real soon. Yeah, quick, uh, sooner but rather than later would be <laughs> yes, nice. Sir. And it, Maybe this week the Jags are back home for the first time in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's always good to, to be home. You know, guys can get on their normal schedules, get their haircuts, get their car washed hang out with their fans a little bit, and not have to travel. And so hopefully with that today will be one of those games that we come out, we play effective, we play hard, and find a way to put a W on the board. 
What are these haircuts you speak of? <laughs> yeah, haircuts. You know, Jerry <laughs> Rice said, Jerry Rice, the great Jerry Rice said, if you look like, you feel like, you play like a million bucks. So part of this whole haircut process is my little part in this deal. Is to make sure our guys get nice haircuts on Friday so they feel fresh and clean going to the game, excited about playing a football game. I have no use for haircuts, <laughs> but that's another problem. That's I wasn't going to bring that up, JP, yeah, but, you know, you I, did. I did it for you. Okay, Marcus, let's get to the defense now. The uh, the group last week had four starters out to begin the game, and then another got ejected. So that brought in a lot of inexperience and, in some places, youth to play and start in last week's game. And they held their own for the most part, for three quarters especially. They were in the game. They had a couple takeaways, gave some short fields to the offense. So I thought overall that the defense played okay last week, considering. Yeah, very, very much considering, you know, like having four starters and those four starters are uh, kind of the crux and the backbone of our defense. And then you have one of our safeties that get ejected from the game. And so you start relying on an even much younger talent. We're already a young football team, but to have a, even a younger guy go and play at safety and it did pretty well. I think Daniel Thomas did a phenomenal job when he got his number called to play. Uh, as you stated, I think our defense played solid. Again, we have to figure out how to finish those opportunities where we have uh, our young guys and our second string guys stepping in the game and playing well. We just have to find out, figure out how to finish those games. Hopefully we do that today. Yeah, Daniel Thomas led the team in tackles last week and played only half the game. A good effort for the rookie from Auburn. The offense, though, couldn't cash in those opportunities. They've been one of the best red zone teams in football going into last week. But they were only two of four in the red zone, and that does not include one where they got down to the 21-yard line then had a holding call and missed a field goal there at the end of the half. Is it a blip on the radar? This seems to be a pretty good red zone team. When they get to the red zone, they can usually score in the red zone. Yeah, I like our opportunities. You know, what we have on offense with our play callers, our, our coaches that get our guys ready to go, I'm very excited about what could happen. You know, Detroit has a first-round pick, a uh, corner from – Ohio State. And so I think it'll be a great matchup here in Chark. Hopefully Chark will, you know, come out on this thing on top and Minshew has a great game. We find a way to get him protected and, and score more touchdowns in the red zone. That's what it's all about. We 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 like field goals, but we'd rather have touchdowns. That would be the idea, yes. Okay, Marcus, we're gonna have your player and coach of the week coming up in the high school area around Jacksonville. But I, your dobber's down a little bit. We we gotta yeah. get you up here for week six and it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint, okay? Thanks. I, I thank you. I appreciate it. You, you're not only a great uh, broadcaster, you're also a mental therapist that helps me out and get my mojo going. I thank you, JP. That's awesome, brother. Uh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> That's Marcus, you, pa- Marcus Pollard, the uh, Director of Team Development for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And each week, as we promise, the Player and Coach of the Week from his desk to your ears, the CSX High School Player of the Week, Antoine McRae of Westside High School. He is a sophomore, but he was a freshman starter on the varsity team. And this week he had three touchdowns. Listen to this, Mike. 72-yard rushing touchdown, a 78-yard reception for a score, and a 62-yard interception return for a touchdown and a win over Bishop Kenny. Sounds like me back in the day. Oh, <laughs> really? I oh, playing Madden, of course. Uh, yeah, not, not, in, not in real you're life. You're a 60-minute player, right? Uh, no, no question. Oh, okay, of course. Uh, the Whataburger High School Coach of the Week, Adam Geis of Sandalwood High School. He's been down there for 18 years, and uh, they're developing young men for their tomorrow. And uh, when asked for a quote that described his coaching style, he said, Be like water. Very Bruce Lee like. <laughs> it's something. That, that's where it came from. Bruce Lee. <laughs> that was his go. motto. Be like water. Congratulations, Anton McRae, the high school player of the week, presented by CSX, and Adam Geis of Sandalwood, the Whataburger High School Coach of the Week. Green Day, Fall Out Boy, and Weezer, the Hella Mega Tour. One night, three of Rock's biggest bands at TIAA Bank Field, July 31st, 2021. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Up next, the second hour of the Publix Tailgate Show. We'll have the top headlines of the week. And first rounds on us, our weekly visit with our resident first rounders, Tony Baselli and Jeff Lagerman. The Lions and the Jaguars tee it up at 1 o'clock today at week 6. And from TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville, this is the Publix Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. Thank you.
At ViStar, we believe in better. And that means treating people better with friendly, personal service that's kept our members happy since 1952. A smile and personal greeting when you enter the branch. An online or phone chat for those quick questions. And a call center that's open every day. If you believe that great service is better, join ViStar. We never forget that it's your money. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're hitting refresh now, palm trees swaying now, letting loose now, busting a move now, cranking up the beats now, hands in the air now, feeling free now. You're on Tropic Time now. And right now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, try our watermelon mojito and guava margarita smoothies. And you're tasting fruity now, sipping sunshine now, toasting summer now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Jaguars fans, let's tackle social injustice together on game days with Selfies for Change. Visit TIAABank.com slash Selfies for Change to take a virtual selfie with a Jaguars player and unlock a $5 donation to the Jaguars Foundation to help fight social injustice. Share your photo on Instagram or Twitter using hashtag Selfies for Change so more fans can be part of the movement. Join us on game days at TIAABank.com slash Selfies for Change. TIAA Bank is the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's handmade vodka distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. Tito'sVodka.com. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, the CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing staffing firms in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI knows how important it is to find the right people for your team. See why some of Jacksonville's top companies choose CSI for their staffing needs. Visit the CSICompanies.com or call 800-582-0828 today. That's 800-582-0828 for the CSI companies. Oi. Bonjour. Xin chào. Dobry den. Ki finansat kon? Como te podemos ayudar? If you have an accident, the last thing you should have to worry about is a language barrier. That's why at Fair and Fera, we have a team as diverse as our clients. So no matter what language you speak, we'll fight for your voice. Farah and Farah, here for you. Nahna hon lalkil. Ici, pour vous. Aquí, para todos. Here for all. Jacksonville. The Publix Tailgate Show continues right now. Welcome in. Second hour of the Publix Tailgate Show. The Jags are home today. Yes, it's been a little bit. Today, the Jags and the Lions at 1 o'clock. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bankfield. Today's game presented by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. The Jags riding a four-game slide here, Mike. Got to get back on track against the Lions team that's 1-3. and three. They're coming off a of bye week. A week ago. Yeah, no, look, there's no question. Uh, you know, nobody's going to wait for you. Nobody's going to slow down for you. This is uh, learning in real time for a very young football team, but the, there are no excuses. You know, you're playing, again, a very beatable team for the third week in a row, a team that comes in absolutely atrocious against the run defensively in Detroit here. Uh, you've got to make them pay, unlike the way uh, you were not able to make Houston and Cincinnati pay to the same degree that you should have based on the numbers. So, uh, it's got to have that, and you can't let Matt Stafford sit back there and turn his head and just pick out his favorite receiver all day. I don't know what they're going to do to generate that pass rush, but they've got to come up with something. Well, we're, we're about 30 minutes away from inactives as well, so uh, a lot of uh, ears and eyeballs on the status of Josh Allen today. And uh, Avery Jones also questionable on that defensive line for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The weather forecast is fantastic. 72 degrees currently, around 75 at game time. High around 79 today. There's a chance of showers late in the day, maybe about the end of the game. But so far, so good. A hint of fall in the air. Let's get to today's top story, starting with the Jaguars 
defense. Today, of course, they're facing Matthew Stafford. But uh, also one of the all-time great running backs. And Adrian Peterson, defensive coordinator Todd Wash, still has flashbacks. You, you know, when we flipped the tape on on uh, Monday afternoon, I was like, damn, he's still running like he did when he was 22 years old. It, you know, he still has his unbelievable jump cut. It, you know, I think it was uh, nine years ago we played him in Seattle, and I think he's still running somewhere in Mexico. Uh, he has the ability to make people miss, and he runs extremely, extremely hard. You see him play behind his pads. It's going to be very important. He really likes to be able to get the ball to bounce, so I think our guys on the perimeter and the edges have to be able to tackle well. All right, so he's getting up there in age, but uh, he's still out there and still somewhat effective, certainly for the Lions. Yeah, and what you hear Todd Wash say, I mean, it, Adrian Peterson's style has been described as running angry, right, running violently. He really uh, does run hard, and he wants to punish the would-be tackler as much as he's going to take punishment. But look, AP's had those games throughout his career, even at the height of his powers, where he gets off to incredibly slow starts at times. You know, you see that line, 10 carries for 14 yards, something like that. But you always have to be wary because he still has the long speed. He can still pop one. And so they it depends on how much they stick with it today to see if that comes true. And don't forget DeAndre Swift, really good receiver out of the backfield. He's starting to come on. Had the big drop against Chicago in week one that would have won the football game uh, late for them. He seems to have bounced back from that. So it's not just Adrian Peterson that's a challenge in the Lions' backfield today. No doubt about that. Uh, AP, though, does have three career touchdowns against the Jags. Two of those came in the 2012 game week one at Minnesota in the old Metrodome. That was his first game back from a knee injury. The, uh, they missed some time with uh, so AP in the backfield today. Middle linebacker Joe Schobert now settling into his first season in this defensive scheme for the Jags. How has he played so far, and how has the communication worked on defense? And there's been a few times where I've been able to get to get to a zone or get to a, an area and have a shot at getting the ball back for our team, and just got to capitalize on on those plays. But communication has been good. Obviously, we've been there's been a lot of uh, comings and goings in the starting lineup and the guys on the field. But I think the communication has just been getting better and better. And uh, as long as we can keep building on it, I think we'll be good. Yeah, Schobert's the guy with the communication in his helmet, so he's calling the plays on defense, and as he looks around the huddle the last few weeks, there's a lot of new faces out there on defense. Well, there are. Uh, you know, look, the main thing has been when Miles Jack has been on the field, the linebacking unit has been pretty solid, or solid to spectacular at times, and when he's not, they've missed him tremendously. And, uh, you know, Schobert's, to me, the biggest – addition he's made is just simply the enabling of Miles Jack to free up and play weak side right now. I don't think Schobert's having a, a standout year to this point. Not that he's done anything particularly wrong, but he's the guy that we've you know heard can get his hands on the football in coverage. Haven't seen that yet. Um, you know he's not a big thumper type, but, but it, you know right now if you get everybody lined up and playing mistake free assignment football, we'll take that uh, if it enables Miles Jack to go out there and play to the superstar level that he did through the first three plus games. Let's get to the offensive side now. The Jags have been one of the better red zone teams in the NFL over the first four weeks of the season. And when they get down there, they usually punch it in. Last week, though, two of four officially in the red zone, and that does not include another drive where they get to the 21-yard line. Offensive coordinator Jay Gruden says he needs more balance when they get close to the goal line. Uh, it gets tough down there a lot of times. Some of these defenses, they got the edges secure. They got the safety down there. It's hard to run the ball. They're in jam fronts. Uh, you want to try to throw it a little bit, but uh, we do have to do a better job of trying to pound it in there like we did against Miami. Uh, obviously, James scored three times uh, against Tennessee, so uh, that'll be a focal point. But we also, you know, there there's some looks that are very uh, good to throw the ball. we got to win our one-on-one -on -one matchups. You know, we got to throw the ball out there in tight windows and make some plays. Yeah, there are tight windows when you get down in the red zone. Uh, but, you know, hey, they've been pretty good at it, at least early in the season, when they get in there. Yes. Uh, one thing I think we talked about, though, on the postgame last week is, when you're inside the five-yard line, you got to have James Robinson on the field. They had Chris Thompson in there, even on first and goal. And, you know, even though he's lined up right there off of Gardner Minshew's right hip, there's very little threat that you're going to turn and hand him the ball. He's not the kind of guy who's going to push the pile. So by taking James Robinson out, who's a very good receiver in his own right, you're almost telegraphing exactly what you're going to do to the opposing defense. So I'd like to see that change made today inside the 10-yard line. James Robinson needs to be the running back that's on the field, unless he is a guy who just ripped off a 60-yarder to get him down there. I'll give him one play to catch his breath and then get right back in there and present that threat to the defense. The Jaguars are on their fifth kicker of the season, and John Brown was promoted from the practice squad this week. He has time with the Bengals and 49ers, but he has never attempted a field goal or an extra point 
in a game, in the NFL, college, or in high school. He was a soccer player in his younger days. And Doug Marone says there's an appreciation for those who can do this well. You know, John Brown's coming in here, and, you know, he, we worked him out. He, he looked good, and I guess we'll just have to see when he goes out there on Sunday. But, you know, there's a difference. I think that, you know, you can go out there and you can look good in practice, but I think it's a whole different ball game. you know, when you go out there on a Sunday and then the pressure comes involved. It's, a, it, it's more difficult than going in your backyard and just trying to kick a field goal, you know. We'll see how John does because, you know, he hasn't done that before. Lambeau, Wright, Hauschka, Rosas, John Brown, now the fifth Jaguars kicker in a five-week span, actually. Yeah, well, hopefully he comes through and becomes more than just a footnote and a trivia question down the road because, I mean, you got to the point last week where you couldn't trust anything. You couldn't trust an extra point. Uh, so, you know, it, I hope his range is at least out to 49 yards. Hope he can get it to the crossbar. That would be a big step in the right direction uh, based on what we saw last week. So, I don't know. JP is a complete unknown. The guy hasn't yeah. kicked uh, a placement in – his life, basically. Yeah, right? I, you know, I, I have an idea that he could probably get it there from 49. It might be who knows where it's going to go. I would think so, too. I'm just saying it's a <laughs> but, rare occasion. We saw that last week. Hauschka comes up short on the 49-yarder. You don't see that in the NFL that's right. very often. Uh, you got to make your 24-yarders as well there, Mr. Brown. So just make – look, make the ones that – you should make, which, you know, if you got a big leg, 49 and in is basically very doable in the National Football League these days. Uh, but every week that goes by, it makes you realize what a valuable commodity they have in a healthy Josh Lambert. There's no doubt about that. And if things go awry today, Logan Cook would be available to kick placements if needed. Jaguars punter. That's in an emergency situation how about for an offense does it matter to a play caller that the kicker is different according to Gruden this week he said no they expect the kickers who are on the roster to make the kicks so it doesn't really go into his play calling too much unless the head coach gets in his ear and says hey we're, we're changing things up but does it creep into quarterback Gardner Minshew's mind at all the kicking situation not not in the moment um you know anytime you're missing a player like that you obviously you know you feel it but you know more than anything we're trying to score touchdowns and you know, we're not we're not playing for field goals. You know, that, that that was our problem more than anything is we shouldn't have had to attempt that many field goals. Yeah, the only time you would really think about that is what end of half and end of game if you're down by that amount and trying to just get a field goal and, and get to overtime or win. Yeah, but I think there are those occasions when you're in that range where you're just like, what is this guy's range? You know, if you feel <laughs> like Lambo is good out to 55 yards, right? Oh, well, okay, so you know when you get to a certain area of the field – we could go for three here and feel pretty good about his chances to make that. So every week, it's what is the effective range of the kicker. They determine that in pregame warm-up. So I, it may not enter into Gardner's mind during a drive, but it has to enter in the coaching staff's mind. I don't care what Jake Gruden says. You have to factor that in. Uh, you can't just assume we're going to make that kick. This guy's range may not be the same as the last guy's range, and his accuracy might not be as well. So uh, I think all that gets rolled in there, and we'll see how aggressive they get in that kind of 35-yard line-ish area in opponent's territory uh, today. And this is probably about the time frame that uh, Brown's out there getting Testing loose. it out. Yeah, two hours or so, a little inside two hours before kickoff time today. There you have it, some of today's top stories. The Jaguars game day radio broadcast is presented by ViStar Credit Union. If you believe no car payment for 90 days is better, join ViStar. It's a standard feature on new or used car loans. ViStar never forgets that it's your money. Time now for our weekly visit with the guru, David Lamb. Here he is with Lamb at Large. Thanks, guys. At least somebody's going to be happy when today's game ends. The Jaguars and the Lions are two of the NFL's worst franchises over the last 20 years. This season, of course, has produced more of the same old, same old. Each has only one victory and already is on the verge of missing the playoffs. The Lions have pulled off a rarity. Losing with the franchise quarterback in Matthew Stafford, he keeps piling up the yards, but the Lions keep losing. They've had other major stars, too, but both Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson, for example, went into early retirement because of the losing. The Jaguars keep hoping and praying they've found their quarterback at Gardner Minshew, but the jury is still out. With one exception, the Jaguars are mired in a decade of losing, but the Jaguars have never hit rock bottom as badly as the Lions. It was 13 years ago when the Lions went 0-16. They're still trying to recover. They've only made the playoffs three times during that span. They've lost double-digit games six times. No need to regurgitate the Jaguars' record. So why do their fans keep buying tickets? Why do their players keep busting their butts? 
First, because only 30 cities have NFL franchises, they don't grow on trees. There are about a half a dozen American towns that would crave a franchise. As for why the players continue to play hard, well, let me count the reasons. Number one is keeping their jobs. Great paying jobs with a short shelf life, even for the best players. Know any other job where their starting pay is about 500000 a year? Then there's the competitive spirit, pride, and celebrity status. I get a kick out of it when players retire and say they want to spend more time with their families. NFL players have more family time than most other jobs allow. One thing you can expect today is the players will play hard, if not will. And one fan base will go home winners. David Lamb, the uh, comments of the guru, a weekly feature of the Public's Tailgate Show. Yeah, just say, if you think you're a long-suffering Jaguars fan, put things into perspective. Detroit has never played in a Super Bowl, and they've been around well before uh, the Super Bowl era began. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's very true. The uh, well, the and the Jags have been here what 26 seasons now. So right, I yeah. mean, it's been a long time, but I mean, Detroit's been you know in the Super Bowl era double that that they haven't gotten there. I know the Jags haven't either, but rarely has Detroit in my lifetime had any playoff success whatsoever. Even winning a game, getting there, anything like that. So, uh, you know, when people say we're due, it's our time. No one's due. You got to make so you gotta go good win decisions, yeah. pick good players. They yeah. have to play well, and uh, you know there are teams that have shown you that that formula. Uh, is one that escapes them over a long period of time. So let's hope that's not the case with Jacksonville. Farah and Farah reminds you to continue to wear a mask and help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Farah and Farah, protecting you and your family since 1979. We're back with First Rounds on Us, our weekly visit with our resident first rounders, Tony Baselli and Jeff Lagerman. The Lions and the Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock. And from TIAA Bank Field, this is the Public Sailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. In Florida, bicyclists have these same rights and responsibilities as everyone else on the road. So when you ride, follow the rules. Always wear a helmet and use lights on your bike. And drivers, watch for cyclists. Give them space to ride. And don't forget when making that right on red, look to your right first to see if a cyclist is approaching in the bike lane. We all have a responsibility to keep ourselves and each other safe. Alert today, alive tomorrow. Because safety doesn't happen by accident. This message brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Some things make a house your home. Like endless hot water that makes the tranquility from an everyday shower your thing. When heating water with natural gas, you have hot water when you need it. Save money and earn a rebate up to $675. Your home. Our safe, reliable, efficient energy. Love natural gas. Find rebate details at peoplesgas.com. Jaguars fans, let's tackle social injustice together on game days with Selfies for Change. Visit TIAABank.com slash Selfies for Change to take a virtual selfie with a Jaguars player and unlock a $5 donation to the Jaguars Foundation to help fight social injustice. Share your photo on Instagram or Twitter using hashtag Selfies for Change so more fans can be part of the movement. Join us on game days at TIAABank.com slash Selfies for Change. TIAA Bank is the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports watching drink of all time Pepsi. With refreshing deliciousness specially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouthwatering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong. I used to care when Mike chaired so hard he spilt nacho cheese on my carpet, but thanks to Pepsi, even Mike can't ruin my football party. <sighs> So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Hanania Subaru of Orange Park would like to present our new dealership with over 13 acres of vehicles to choose from in our new online buying program, iBuy. You decide how much of your buying experience you do online. Browsing, value your trade, picking your payments, financing. Just go to SubaruofOrangePark.com, pick out your vehicle, and click iBuy to begin. Become an iBuy preferred customer at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, your local Subaru superstore. Jaguars fans, Brian Sexton here. I've discovered something that will take your tailgate to the next level this football season. Bernie Grills. You've never seen anything like these portable all-wood grills. 
Bernie's are convenient, affordable, and simple to use with no messy cleanup. Bernie's Real Alder Wood Flavor makes burgers and brats taste delicious. I grilled some steaks on mine the other night, and they were incredible. So get your Bernie Grill for the next game at BernieGrill.com or at Amazon. Bernie Grill. Life. Grill. Done. Welcome back, J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bank Field. The Public's tailgate show rolls along. The Lions and the Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock. And tickets for the Daily Place 2021 season are on sale now. Great seats available for incredible shows like Tedeschi Trucks Band, Kane Brown, Marin Morris, Alicia Keys, and many more. Go to dailiesplace.com for more information and to buy tickets. Time now for first rounds on us. New York Jets, first round choice. Jeff Lagerman. The Jacksonville Jaguars have selected tackle Southern California, Tony Roselli. Only way to the top is looking out for number one. And that's us. Keep looking out for number one. We welcome in our resident first round picks, Jeff Lagerman, 1989 to the New York Jets. Tony Baselli, 1995 to your Jacksonville Jaguars. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, JP. How are things? Things are, are fantastic. Uh, got a little bit of overcast sky. Going to be a fairly nice day for football. Can't, can't beat it. A little fall in the air walking in today, which was yeah, very, well, very little fall. Started out a little bit of fall, and now it's turning in a little <laughs> bit of post, post-summer. <laughs> yeah, okay, getting a little warmer out there now. Uh, maybe it's just the air conditioning in this room. I'm not sure. Um, let's, uh, let's get right to the report just a moment ago. Tom Pelissero of NFL Network said that uh, DJ Chark will be active and Josh Allen will be out. The official inactives are due in about 12 minutes from right now. Uh, if Josh Allen's out again, uh, how do the Jaguars – get Matthew Stafford to dance those feet today? Well, I mean, it's a great question, and uh, you activated Jabal Sheard off the practice squad. He's a guy that has played a lot of football. In fact, I was surprised that he wasn't active when they, when they signed him. I was like, holy cow, I can't believe he was on the street. You know, he's got over 50 career sacks. Uh, last time we saw him, Tony, for the Colts, I thought he was a good football player. Yeah, but he's getting up there in age a little bit. Yeah. But, no, but he's solid, Jeff. Um I almost like the two guys they you know signed recently, you know, sheared off the streets and then Correa in the trade are are solid players. I don't know how much of an impact they're going to make. Like where you say, "Wow, this is an impact guy who can change a defense." But I think you can get some solid play. And what you hope for out of sheared is just some pressure, impact. Like like I'm not even saying like you have to get the sack, but can you get Matthew Stafford's feet moving? Because if you watch the tape, as you and I both have, his feet aren't great. He, they have one of the worst. Um, they give up almost more hits than anyone else in the NFL. But I put a lot of that oh, on Stafford on because Absolutely. he moves into pressure if you just flash in front of him. I, I, so I they got to get it going a little bit. I broke down some film this week for Jaguars All Access, and, and there were instances where Matt Stafford drops back. It's a four-man pressure. They weren't even showing blitz. And as soon as his back foot hits in his drop, he's all over the place. He's all over the map. You're like, holy cow, man, this is a veteran guy. Is he scared? Well, I mean, I don't know, but uh, that's been a lot of the conversation up in Detroit. The thing that I wonder about is that if you have Jabal Sheard playing today, let's say Josh Allen can't play. I don't know what the status is going to be on him. And then you have Correa because they talked about him playing some Sam. Well, last time I checked, unless maybe one of these other guys can play Sam, What's your game plan going to look like? I mean, can can you have an intricate game plan, or does it have to be pretty simplified? Well, I think it, I think you're going to see a more simplified plan, Jeff, just for the reason you said. You have so many new faces um, that are brand new, and if you're starting Sam, who's been here, what, a total of about less than a week? Uh, well, he got here Wednesday. Yeah, so less than well, a week. Well, trade was, <laughs> was done on Wednesday, so I don't know how many practices he had. But, and I mean, you, you got to be concerned, and fortunately the, uh, the Lions like to run uh, – a lot of three wide receiver sets and split the tight end out, and Jaguars probably will treat that with a lot of nickel so you won't have him on the field. Uh, but still, I think it, it's a little bit of concern. And uh, and here's the thing. Even though we criticize Matt Stafford, the guy's thrown for over 40,000 yards in his career. Oh, he can play. And when he gets hot. Watch out. There, th- he has about as good an arm as there is in the National Football League, JP. And if he gets rolling, look out. 
Uh, guys, along this line, talking about pass rush, Caleb on chase on through five games, been credited with two quarterback hits, and I understand he's you know learning how to play with his hand on the ground, but what's your confidence level that he can get something going as the season continues along? Well, he's a young player, and, and it is a big adjustment for him, and it's not just an adjustment just because he has, has his hand in the ground. He's pass rushing against guys that are – that pretty, are good. pretty damn good you can't compared just use, to college. Yeah, yeah. You just can't use your athletic ability. I think that's the biggest change every young pass rusher has to figure out. And I, and I think back a few years ago when Jeff and I were uh, – when uh, Joey Bosa was coming out of college and we both talked about how he's going to have an immediate impact because he's a natural pass rusher and he did things he in the moves. college game where he used his hands, one arm, you know, bull. You know, he could – move his hips. I mean, he did so many things naturally that were as a pass rusher. Where you watch Kayvon Chase on, he's just a great athlete at this point, and he would beat tackles in college because he was just so far superior. You're not going to get away with that in the NFL, and so he has to develop some rush. Uh, he has to get a, a strategy, a game plan, and figure out what is his go-to move and how does he set it up. You know, not a real powerful guy, so you're not going to do a bunch off power, so you got to use your speed. And I still think he's just learning, and I think Mike. I, see, I thought he was more advanced because I thought he showed a lot of handwork, you know, in training camp. But I mean, it's not showing in the game yeah. now, for whatever reason, and uh, it may take some time for him. Look, there's a lot of first round picks. Oh gosh, <laughs> including me that that didn't have a huge impact as a pass rusher in their first year. It's and not panic time at it, all. No, it's not panic time. But uh, you know, you got to get more, and, and you got to start winning some games. And so, if Jabal Sheard, and it comes down to Jabal Sheard, and maybe. Uh, Caleb on chase on getting reps. I mean, you might give a little bit more to Jabal Sheard, see what he can do today. So, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Well, and what kind of shape is Jabal Sheard in? I don't know. Maybe he was eating donuts and Cheetos <laughs> on the couch for the last two months. Sounds I don't know. like my diet. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, Jeff Logman and Tony Vaselli joining us from the broadcast booth. Okay, the uh, four-game losing skid. Gardner Minshew has at least 40 passing attempts in each of those games. Last week, he threw the ball 49 times. Uh, Tony, we'll start with you. What should and could we expect from this Jaguars offense in terms of a little more balance today? I don't I don't know what we should, I mean, could expect. I mean, that's going to be, is Jay Gruden going to stick to the run, especially if they get behind? We have not seen that in the second half of football games over the last several weeks. Um, what I think should happen, I don't think they should be balanced. I think balance would be bad for this football team. I think they need to be in balance and towards the run. This game has to go through James Robinson in the offensive line. If they want to win, they got to run the ball and then run it. And then guess what? Run it one more time because it does a couple things. It keeps your defense that has struggled on the sideline. You control the tempo of the football game. And I think you are working toward what your real strength is on offense, especially with a beat-up DJ Chark. And so, JP, me for one, I hope there is no balance. I hope they're completely imbalanced <laughs> and they run the ball too much. Well, they're going against the worst team in the league two weeks in a row now as far as stopping the run. And, and Detroit's not very good at that. And so I'm, I'm with you, Tony. The goal should be imbalanced because the last two weeks the goals were balanced and they didn't even achieve it. So let's go all the way overboard and let's just run it 80% of the time and then maybe when the game's over you'll end up being about 50-50, right? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> hopefully they do run the football today. And, uh, and here's the thing. You got to have the score close. The defense can't be giving up, you know, 35 points. You know, they've been giving up over 30, almost 33 a game the last four games. So the defense has to do their part, also so that the offense can maintain that balance or that overbalance, as Tony says. Uh, guys, so we're going on our fifth kicker here in as many weeks. Uh, what's your confidence level that John Brown can convert a 24-yarder or get it to the goalpost on a 49-yarder? Well, I think you'll get. Hold it on, hold on, hold on, Tony. You know, you remember Mike when we were kids growing up, and you had that magic eight ball. Oh and yeah. You shook it up, and yes. then you looked at that little window, and it told you the answer. Outlook not good. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's where we're at right now. I mean, with the kicking situation, right? I mean, how do you know? I mean, the guy's never kicked at high school, college, pro. Uh, does he kicked in club ball? I mean, I don't know, but I mean, how do you know? Well, the word is, I mean, ex soccer player. Um, he has a big leg, so I expect him to be able to get it to the goalpost from 49. How accurate he's going to be, Mike? I, who knows? I mean, this is going to be the first time in a real NFL game outside the preseason where guys are rushing, coming after him. It might come down to him winning or losing the football game. And, frankly, I don't know how he'll react to it. I said this earlier uh, on the show with uh, 
a, a, a pre-pre-game show with Lauren and Hayes and Tony. And I said, you know, the one thing I will say about John Brown, I give him credit. I mean, here's a guy that was in college and he played soccer. Then he transferred to Louisville to, to kick in football. And then he stayed with his dream, ended up coming in the league in 16, spent some time with two different teams, and he hasn't made it yet. But the guy's still chasing a dream. You know, so, I mean, heck, I mean, I give the guy credit for that because a lot of people, once you, you know, five years removed or whatever from college, you're like, ah, I'm not going to make it. I'm not good enough. You know, so forget it. And you give up on it. So, I mean, I give him credit. So I'm kind of rooting for him. Uh, listen, that's great. It's a great hallmark story, Jeff. I hope it works out. In the <laughs> Just make the kick. <laughs> make the kick. I don't care what his perseverance and story. Um, that becomes a great um, little uh, piece we can do if he makes a game winner. If he doesn't, nobody will care. Excellent point, uh, guys. Let's uh, come back in a moment, and we will get to fantasy. Yes, the Geico Fantasy Outlook right around the corner. The uh, Jaguars and the Lions coming up. Frank Frangie will join us in just a moment as well. The Lions and Jaguars at 1 o'clock. And from TIAA Bank Field, this is the Public Sailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. Hanania Subaru of Orange Park would like to present our new dealership with over 13 acres of vehicles to choose from and our new online buying program, iBuy. You decide how much of your buying experience you do online. Browsing, value your trade, picking your payments, financing. Just go to SubaruofOrangePark.com, pick out your vehicle, and click iBuy to begin. Become an iBuy preferred customer at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, your local Subaru superstore. Why do you choose Farah and Farah? First, we have the financial resources to take on any insurance company. And our track record proves that we know how to win. Our attorneys and staff are a team, and we've worked together for decades. To us, our job is much more than just a paycheck. We love to help. And this is important. We never forget. It's not about us. It's all about you. Farah and Farah, Jacksonville. Hey Jacksonville, this is Joe Adib from Bono's. I just want to let you know that we have now reopened all of our dining rooms. We appreciate all the love that you have showed us during this crisis. For over 71 years, we have been here for you through good times and bad. Our award-winning barbecue and our unbelievable staff look forward to seeing you soon. Be safe. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat, more cheese, more veggies, more quality, more taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash, made fresh, Daly's. Dreamfinders Homes has a simple commitment to their home buyers. Deliver unsurpassed quality, uncompromising value, and an extraordinary level of customization you simply won't find with other home builders. With over 40 communities to choose from, you'll find a location you love and the home of your dreams. Dreamfinders has townhomes, single-family homes, and custom estate homes starting from the high 100s and a wide selection of move-in ready homes. Quality, value, customization, that's the Dreamfinders difference. Call 904-738-0165 or online at dreamfindershomes.com. Dreamfinders Homes, the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Price is subject to change without notice equal housing opportunity
J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. The Publix Tailgate Show rolls along. Lions and the Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock, and today's game is presented by Baptist Health. Changing health care for good. The inactives are in, Mike. What you got for the Jags? Uh, looking at uh, the Jags here, Josh Allen is out, as we suspected. Uh, other inactives include Jake Luton, uh, defensive tackle Daniel Akawale, and wide receiver Didi Westbrook. Uh, I'm just reading this through um, John Osier's post on the Jaguars app right now as uh, I don't see anybody else listed as inactive for the Jags there. So. Yeah, John Ozier has uh, Allen, Avery Jones, okay. Luke Barku, Daniel Aquale, Dede Westbrook, and Jake Luton. Yeah, didn't have Avery and Barku in that that column that I was looking at. There so there go. you go. Add those guys to the mix. And uh, for the Lions, uh, David Blau, uh, their backup quarterback, will not play today. Desmond Trufant, one of their corners, Elijah Lee, a linebacker. Offensive lineman Logan Stenberg, guard Kenny Wiggins, and wide receiver Quintez Cephas all inactive today. All right, so a couple other changes to the starting lineup for the Jags, too. Caleb on chase on will start at defensive end for Josh Allen. Devon Hamilton will start at nose tackle in place of Avery Jones. And Correa will start at strong side linebacker for the Jags. And <laughs> I don't know if he even had any Welcome practice time this week. But uh, here you go. Here's a uniform. Uh, go play against the Lions We're going to get today. something for that sixth-round pick, JP. You got that right. Uh, time now for the Geico Fantasy Outlook. Great news. There's a, qu a quick way you could save money. Switch to Geico. Go to geico.com, and in 15 minutes you could save 15% or more. On car insurance. Tony and Jeff back with us in the booth. We welcome in Frank Frangi and Mike Dempsey. It's time for the Geico Fantasy Outlook. How are we standing? All right. Uh, you did very well last week, JP. Yes, you I came did. in first place last week uh, with the trio of Patrick Mahomes, Mike Davis, and Calvin Ridley netting you 81 points. You are the high score for the week. Thank uh, you. Tony Baselli was second with 71. I came in third with 66. <laughs> Jeff Logman with 57. And Frank Frangie bringing up the rear with 42 points uh, last week, so you nearly doubled up Frank. Uh, hmm. Jeff in the lead overall with 359. Uh, JP, you've got 339. I'm at 324. Tony's at 281, and Frank hmm. at 239 points <laughs> right now. Everybody's hurt. Only I guess I heard every out of the league, protested. Frank. You're only 120 out of the league. Uh, the draft order this week, Frank, Jeff, myself, Tony, and JP, we draft the quarterback, running back, and a wide receiver or a tight end. And, uh, Frank, the board is yours. Uh, whoever I pick, Mike's going to get hurt, so I'm just going to go ahead and alert you now that the injuries are about to happen. But I will start. Can you pick Stafford then, please? <laughs> yeah, Dak last yeah, week. Yeah. Exactly. I, will, I had Dak. I've had him hurt every week. I'll take Devontae Adams, please. Devontae Adams, all right. Uh, Jeff Logaman. I will take Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs. Interesting here. Do I hmm. take the guy I know I should take? Or do I think he'll make it all the way back to me? I'm going to roll the dice and go with Kyler Murray at quarterback here. Wow. Uh, leaving Tony up next. I'm going to go. Uh, uh, I'm going to go Madison. Alexander oh, you Madison. did. All right. Good oh, for you. That That, that is the right pick, by the way, yeah. Alexander Madison. I didn't know if he'd sneak past you guys at the end of the the draft here. But uh, that's all right. We'll go with uh, JP up next for two picks. Tom Brady. Brady. Derrick Henry. And Henry, all right. Uh, Tony, back to you for a quarterback or a pass catcher. I'm going to bet that he can have back-to-back -back good weeks. I'm going to go with Ryan Fitzpatrick. All right, Fitz is a nice play this week Streaky. against the Jets. Uh, I'm going to go with Mike Davis, get him in while the getting's good for the Carolina Panthers before Christian McCaffrey gets back. Jeff, need a quarterback or a running back from you? Uh, I will take uh, Jonathan Taylor. Okay, Taylor it is. Uh, Frank, same drill, but you get them both here. Yeah, I'll take Aaron Rodgers. Okay. And I think, uh, how about Kareem Hunt? And Kareem Hunt. All right. And Jeff, your quarterback. I will take uh, Gardner Minshew. Minshew. Okay, he's got DJ Chark at his disposal. I'm going to go with uh, Calvin Ridley at wide receiver. Uh, Tony, need a receiver as well? I'm going to try to double up. I'm going to go a little Devontae Parker. I like Devontae this week. That's a good one. And JP, same for you. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Had I not used him, would have loved the hook up there. Uh, may he catch many touchdowns. All right, Frank's got Aaron Rodgers, Kareem Hunt, and Devontae Adams. Jeff goes with Gardner Minshew, Jonathan Taylor, and Stephon Diggs. I've got Kyler Murray, Mike Davis, and Calvin Ridley. Tony goes with uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Alexander Madison, and Devontae Parker. And JP has Tom Brady, Derrick Henry, and DeAndre Hopkins. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, good luck, uh, guys. Tony and Jeff will be back in countdown to kickoff. 
a little bit later, uh, inside an hour from now, for some final thoughts before today's Lions Jaguars matchup. Time now for the Frank Frangie file. We visit longer with Jags play by play man Frank Frangie. Well, I mean, the broadcast is always here at home, but the team is playing at home today, Frank. That's a little bit different from the last few weeks. Yeah, and I'll tell you too, JP, if the team's playing at home, that is different. Good to have them back here and good to be back in our broadcast booth, our normal booth, and actually watching the game, not monitor. So, yeah, that's different for us as well. Boy, oh, boy, you need the home field. If the advantage, if there can be a home field advantage with a limited crowd, boy, does this team ever need it. This is another winnable game. We've been saying that for about a month now, JP. Really got to find a way to win this and – Goodness gracious, if the crowd can help, that's good because it's a big game for the Jags to somehow get going here. Yeah, undefeated at home on Sundays so far. <laughs> that's right. You know what? Well said, Mike. Absolutely. I feel better already. You can't come into this place on a Sunday at 1 o'clock nope. and expect to walk out nope. victorious unless you're, you're wearing go, teal. You're going to fight. Uh, Frank, uh, we've been hearing it for weeks. We need to run the ball more. We need to run the ball more. Jay Gruden said, I need to you know, get that passing number down maybe into the high 20s, ideally. Uh, commit to it. Look, the, the conditions were there. They were in the game last week. Do you think that they will actually follow through with it this yeah, week? Yeah, I'd be really surprised if they don't. Because of all the conversation, Mike, the point you just made, everybody's talked about it. And now they've talked about it enough times that I'd be very surprised if we don't see a real concerted ground effort. You know the numbers. For the second week in a row, the Jags come into the game playing the team that's worst in the league against the run. That This week, that's the Lions. So I think even if the circumstance doesn't dictate running the ball, that's what's happened sometimes, is circumstance doesn't always dictate it. I would think today, beyond the, regardless of the circumstance, Mike, I think they're going to run the football. Down 10-0, I think they're going to keep running. I hope they're not down 10 nothing. You get my point. I think even down, I think they're going to keep running the football at least through the first half and see if they can get that thing going. Frank, the defense had a better week last week. Obviously, they still gave up 30 points in the game, but uh, through three three quarters, it felt like they um, kind of gave this team a chance last week. They had a couple of takeaways. The offense, of course, you know, we obviously have talked about they weren't able to cash in those turnovers. But there were guys that stepped into roles last week. A guy like Sidney Jones played well. Dewan Smoot, who's a rotational guy, but he had a nice day on the defensive line last week. Uh, those two guys especially could be a little something to uh, continue to use as the season goes along. Yeah, I think so, JP. A couple things. Number one, to play well without Miles Jack, who's probably your best defender right now, says something. I think they're finding themselves a little bit. I hope DeJuan Smoot continues to play well. He's a good guy, and it was fun to see him emerge. But I think they got something in Sidney Jones now. I, 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 he certainly seems he was a high draft pick. You know the story. Got hurt at the war, at the workout and and wasn't regarded as highly and kind of had to find himself a little. I think he's a pretty good player. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you look up in a few years and C.J. Henderson and Sidney Jones are the cornerbacks and they're pretty good ones. So yes, I, I think the fact that Sidney Jones played as well as he did is significant. Look, if you have two corners covering pretty well, man, that changes a lot of the stuff Todd Wash can do. So yes, I, I was encouraged last week. I truly was. Uh, who worries you more, Frank, uh, from a Jaguars defensive perspective, Kenny Galladay or Adrian Peterson? Uh, probably the passing game a little bit, Mike. I, I think they've done a pretty good job of, of, of st stuffing the run. They're way better against the run than they were last year. Um, I think Stafford to Galladay concerns me. Uh, I, I do. I, Stafford hasn't played great this year. You, you guys were talking about that with Jeff and Tony. But I'm more concerned with Galladay getting behind the defense. It's still a young defense. Uh, AP's had a magnificent career, and he's a fantastic player. He doesn't worry me as much for today's game as the passing game does. How much have you watched John Brown on the field today? Uh, so you know, far? he just went out there. We, he just went out there, and I'm, wa I'm watching every kick, JP. I'm, I'm, I've never seen You want to give us some play-by-play -play right yeah. now? Well, you know what he's Brown, okay, I will. He's lining up now. This is going to be from that little holder thing they use. This is a 48-yarder from the left hash, JP, here with about, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, a couple hours before kickoff, <laughs> thereabouts. Okay, he's lining up. Uh, it, there is no rush, JP. <laughs> it's a good hold, in, as a matter of fact, here. From, th from 48 yards, the left hash, John approaches it. That kick is up, and it is good, and it hits midway up the uh, net. Okay, that would have been good from about 58. How'd I do, JP? I think that's a pretty good start for John Brown. Not bad. Okay. As long as he didn't have the word short in there anyway. <laughs> he was not short from 48. That I can tell you, Mike, for sure. Guys, got to, you know, it is interesting, isn't it, to see an NFL game and a guy kicking an NFL game that never even attempted a field goal in high school? I mean, if, if you think about and he's got a big leg. I'm watching him, seriously. But isn't that a, an, an interesting dynamic in the National Football League? Right, yeah. unless you're talking about like a European soccer player or somebody right. coming right. over. You know, we've right. seen that over the years. But, yeah, you're right. A, a kid who grows up in America, plays football, yet never has a chance to kick 
a field goal or an extra point, and here he is making his debut in the National Football League. Yeah, he just made another one, Mike, from 48 yards, and that one. Uh, hey, save that, those. So, okay, yeah. Save those, John Brown. <laughs> Leave some bullets oh, in the Hopefully, holster. well, good. Again, it's also good to see the guys. I, I, I love the teal and white. I'm a teal and white guy, JP, Mike. I'm a teal. I'm, I, I'm in a good mood about this thing. I think it's time to get back on that winning track. That's what I think. All right. I like to hear that. Uh, Frank, have a great call today, and uh, let's call some touchdowns so we don't have to worry about the field goals. Boy, that'd be a lot of fun. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate Frank it. Thanks, Angie, right, from the broadcast booth with uh, yeah, exclusive play-by-play of mm. kicking warm-ups today. I, I thought that was interesting. And I like it. A lot of eyeballs on that one today, of course. Oh, yeah. We're all going to be wondering. I mean, you know, it used to be Lambeau was go get a snack from the fridge. He's going to make this one. We'll be back after commercial. But, no, now you're going to be hanging on the edge of your seat hoping it goes through. Jaguars offense, uh, Mike, you know, it, the, the buzzword this week Balance, right? We heard Tony taking it the extreme other way, 80% run game. I don't think they'll be that Yeah, that's imbalanced. a little balanced. But the idea is you got to give James Robinson the football a little bit more than you have been. Look, 50-50 in today's NFL is, is getting more and more rare, right? So just yeah, being balanced is almost like you're being imbalanced based on trends in the National Football League. But if Jay Gruden's right in that he really would like to limit those pass attempts to maybe 30 or less, then – you've got the answer. Turn around and give it to number 30 and just let James Robinson go out there and do his thing and involve him in the passing game. Keep him in there uh, when you're around the goal line so you at least have a credible threat of the running game. It's on Jay Gruden to make these calls. If he wants this to happen, he's the only one who can dictate uh, who gets the ball and what kind of plays are run. And, of course, a lot of changes on defense today. Josh Allen is inactive. Avery Jones inactive. So Chazon gets another start at defensive end. Devon Hamilton will start at nose tackle today. And uh, Kamale Correa, the strong side linebacker, will start. He was traded over from the Titans today. So, uh, you know, not a full slate up front in the front seven, at least for the Jaguars today. No, but, I mean, it is, you know, it's what, again, it is. It's what you got. <laughs> I mean, right. when Josh Allen was on the field, they didn't have much of a pass rush. They're going to have to manufacture one uh, unless guys just start uh, all of a sudden beating the player in front of them on a more consistent basis. So, uh, you know, Look, uh, at least Kamale Correa has been in the league. It's not like you signed a street-free agent out there and had to plug him in. He's a guy with some good uh, football pedigree, and uh, you know, hopefully he can help. But uh, look, I think the biggest thing, having Miles Jack, C.J. Henderson back, particularly Jack, yes. that's the biggest thing going yes. for this defense right now. No doubt, because you, you, when he left in Cincinnati, that immediately they immediately was a big Right, they immediately started running that Dakota Allen. I thought Allen played much better last week, but he's not – going to play above the X's and O's. Jack's made some spectacular plays at times this year and uh, has been you know, solid in the fundamentals as well for the most part. So I uh, expect a big day out of him if the Jaguars are going to walk away victorious. This season, the Jags have launched predictive gaming exclusively in the Jags mobile app. Choose a bingo card, pick your favorite three players, and place wagers to win prizes. Check the games out now in the mobile App presented by the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're back in a moment on the Publix Tailgate Show. A visit with the Ozone. Jaguars.com senior writer John Osher joins us from his house. <laughs> Jaguars Radio Network coverage begins at noon with countdown to kickoff. We're a little over an hour away from week six. The Lions and the Jaguars coming up. And from TIAA Bank Field, this is the Publix Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat, more cheese, more veggies, more quality, more taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash, made fresh, Daly's. Nothing kicks off your game better than a handful of Georgia peanuts. Power packed with protein, essential nutrients, and great taste. Georgia peanuts are the MVP for affordability, sustainability, and nutrition. To score life's touchdowns with recipes and fun facts, check out GAPeanuts.com. The perfectly powerful peanut is brought to you by the family farmers of the Georgia Peanut Commission. Peanuts! Get your peanuts! 
Hey, Jaguars fans, are you ready to talk some trash? Well, nobody talks trash quite like Waste Pro, the official waste service and recycling partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Specializing in residential and commercial solid waste and recycling collection, processing, and disposal, Waste Pro is equipped to handle all your recycling and garbage removal needs. For service, call 904 731 7288. Waste Pro, caring for communities and caring for Jacksonville. Committed to the team, committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission. We're nonprofit, so we pass the savings along to our members. Because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. I'm Chantel Baker, fiance of DJ Chark. My fiance is always prepared with a game day plan, and so am I. I'm always looking for easy ways to save time, and Publix helps me tackle everything from pregame prep to postgame cleanup with prices that are never out of bounds. This week at Publix, assorted varieties and sizes of Tide Pods or Tide Liquid Laundry Detergent are on sale for $12.49. And look for new Tide Hygienic Laundry Detergent. Available at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Now more than ever, the Jaguars want to recognize our fans in everything you do to make football, well, football. As part of the NFL Fan of the Year contest, the Jaguars are searching for one extraordinary Jaguars fan whose positive influence inspires others in Northeast Florida through their love of the game. You can win a trip to Super Bowl 55. Visit NFL.com slash Fan of the Year now to nominate yourself or others for a chance to win. Final moments of the Publix Tailgate Show. The Lions and the Jaguars tee it up today at 1 o'clock. And today's game is presented by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Let's get a traffic update presented by GEICO. Saving you money on car insurance has been in GEICO's playbook for over 75 years. So what are you waiting for? After the game, get a quote at GEICO.com. We take a look at the ActionNewsJax.com traffic live monitor, and as expected, is 25% capacity again today at TIAA Bank Field. Uh, so the traffic coming in is not like it would be on a normal packed house game day. So uh, a couple of notes, though. When you're coming over the Hart Bridge, uh, note that the Hart Expressway into downtown is no longer. So the two lanes converge into one. So you'll have to shift over to the right to uh, get off the Hart Bridge. You can't go left. There's a big barricade there now. Don't go around the barricade. That's a bad idea. I mm. uh, don't do that. Of that's course, always the way I went anyway. Take that little right right there. Yeah, that's where you get off right there. Um, you know, on the other side of the, the stadium, over from from uh, downtown, the Correct. other side of the stadium, the Correct. the east side, of the stadium. Sure. Yes, that's where that goes. And then mind the cones on the Main Street Bridge, and uh, follow uh, the uh, traffic directions from authorities, and get in safely. And plenty of time. There is construction around TIAA Bank Field. Taking down of that Hart Expressway still continues, and some of the lots around. Uh, near uh, the other part of the stadium, near Daly's Place over there, too. So a little extra time when you finally get downtown to get parked and ready for today's game. Time now for a visit with the Ozone. The Ozone. A guy who waits in traffic for no one mm. is senior writer John Osier. Joining us from the broadcast booth. What's up, John? Yeah, I do not wait in traffic, JP. I just go up on the sidewalk. That's what. So that's that's <laughs> that's your uh, style. Nobody seems to mind. So that's I'm not sure why. That's your style. Yeah. Um, let, let's see. What are you most concerned about today for the Jaguars? Is it the lack of Josh Allen and Avery Jones? Is it what this offense will look like after last week's issues? Is it the kicking game? Uh, pick a card, any card. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of naive to think that you're not going to be a little concerned about the defense considering what it's been all year. I think that's just sort of a – we've talked this week, JP, and I've talked to Mike about it. I think it's just going to be a constant. I don't see this team being a team that's going to hold teams consistently under 21. I think the offense is going to have to outscore people. I'm not any more concerned about the defense this week than I was last week. I think it's just going to be a thing. 
So I think the thing that has cropped up and become sort of the overriding issue is what is Gardner Minshew going to be? Is he going to be able to overcome what teams are clearly starting to scheme with him, which is, you know, playing the soft zone and making him make throws that so far he hasn't made consistently enough. So I think that's become the overriding theme that you've got to watch to see, is he getting better at that or are teams even more consistently taking that away from him? I think that's going to be the storyline for most people who cover the team in the next few weeks to see where this Gardner Minshew story is headed. Uh, John, what they always say is a young quarterback's best friend is a running game or a successful running game, and we've been talking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and, and it continues to come to a head. Jay Gruden uh, has remarked on it multiple times that they need to run the ball more, be better balanced. He's the one that controls those decisions. Uh, do you expect them to swing back in the running direction today uh, as for the third consecutive week you're facing one of the worst run defenses in the league? Yeah, and I really, to be honest, I thought last week was the first time that it just seemed overwhelming of why in the world aren't they running. In other games, it seemed like situationally they were trying to run early, uh, and you could see reasons why they didn't, even though it would have made more sense to do it once you look back at the game in terms of stats. Last week, I thought they clearly got away from it too soon. I expect them to come out thinking run. The only thing that gets you off of that is, are the Lions playing defense in such a way that so encourages the pass that you feel like you must throw against it to beat them? I think that's what happened a little bit against the Texans. What I wonder about, will they have the, whatever the word is, patience, uh, determination to sort of fight through that and run at all costs and of course all that means is you can do that in, unless you fall 14 down and then you can't do it so I expect them to try I don't know how well they'll pull it off because they haven't done it yet the uh, excuse me John the uh, Jags made a trade this week with the Tennessee Titans Kamali Correa joins and hey guess what welcome to the Jaguars you're starting today and uh, Jabal Sheard brought up from the practice squad uh, he could have a role today with Josh Allen out on that defensive line. That, that's a quick turnaround, certainly for Correa, coming in after the trade. Well, it is, and, I, and they clearly wanted to st- – once Leon Jacobs went out, they gave Cassius Marsh a two-week shot. And clearly, you trade for Correa and you cut Marsh the next day. That's a, hey, we needed to be better at strong side linebacker, so he's starting. If he's the player that he's been relatively cons- relatively consistently th- throughout his career, then I think you've got good three good starting linebackers, and they've been okay against the run this year as long as Miles Jack is in there. So I think it bodes well feeling like you've improved strong side and you get Miles back. That should at least allow them to tread water against the run. The only game they didn't do that was, was when Miles went out against Cincinnati. So... If they can do that and get a little bit of pass rush, maybe they can get the lines off the field a couple times. Yeah, speaking of that pass rush, Caleb on chase on starts for yep. Josh Allen. Of course, C.J. Henderson's back in the lineup as well, John. So which of the two Jaguar first-rounders from this year do you think uh, it would behoove them to have the big game today? Who, whose performance today would go further towards dictating a Jaguar win? You know, I've got to say, I'm going to say Henderson because we've seen more out of him just in terms he had a huge game in the first week. Also, say Henderson, just talk about the matchup with him and Jeff Okuda. They, most people thought they were the two best corners. They were the two first uh, taken corners. So I'll go with CJ. If he can get a pick and turn the tide a little bit, that's what this team needs. We talked about it all week. It's got to break serve. It's got to create turnovers, and the offense has to take advantage of that when it happens. Okay, John, uh, you're at the stadium today, so you'll uh, have coverage on uh, social media throughout and then the writing after the game. And... Um then you're, now, do you head out early? What happens with it, this? It, it sort of depends. I've been experimenting with it because uh, most of what we do video-wise is from home. So okay. uh, I will most likely be at the game all the way through. What about that, JP? I'll throw the readers a bone. <laughs> well, isn't that nice of you? We'll look forward to reading your work a little bit later, John. Thanks a lot. All right, JP. John Ozier had the great interview with Jawan Taylor this week. Check it out on the Ozone Podcast presented by Star and the official Jaguars podcast network and of course uh, john Ozer's a great follow on twitter during jaguars games as well that'll do it for the public tailgate show when we return jaguars radio network coverage countdown to kickoff gets underway with pete frisco 
Pride of the Jaguars running back Fred Taylor. And we'll have the final word with head coach Doug Marone. We're an hour away from week six. The Lions and the Jaguars coming up. And from TIAA Bank Field, this is the Publix Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio.